I understand it if you talk slow. Setting issue, or well, not issue, but balance. I mean, you could you could, you could argue that <laughs> painting live is just anybody painting. <laughs> like you got to be alive to be painting. So there's a like I don't know some some essential quintessential sense sense of word. But um, in the setting of like event event or performance, I think you know there's that there's that element of live painting. In a performative aspect, would be somebody painting for the for people to witness the experience of somebody painting. So there to be there to be an audience essentially to the painting experience. Okay, okay, all right. You have said something. Now you said a lot right there. So if you're saying that to the audience experience, what? Can you describe what that look what that could look like or would look like? Uh, in the traditional sense, it would be people being able to stand around and see somebody paint whatever they're painting. It could be like somebody painting a mural and people outside standing and watching, um, or somebody at an event painting and there's you know people walking around able to like watch. Or uh, at the, I think at the lower, the lower end, lower scale, where you know you're present at an event, painting live, and people can watch you, but you're not the focus of, you know, you're not the main focus. But then there could be, um, in the performative a- aspect, if your audience is not present, you could be recording your painting as a live painting experience that people can watch. And due to technology, you can do that where you know people are watching from their virtual whatever. Um, to see you paint, you know, and, and whatever, and there's some form of interaction in between in that moment, you know. So, mm-hmm. get into it that way. All right. So, uh, interact. You just added another layer to that. Um, you were saying interaction. So, do you think interaction is a part of a good live painting or a live painting? Uh, what could be considered a proper or another level of live painting? No, Actually, I think well, I think there's every time you ask me a question, I'm gonna add another. I probably end up adding another layer, um, <laughs> because you can break yeah. like everything down into like two or three other ways of like looking at it too. So like you can look at interaction as there's intended you know, or intentional interaction more or less, where you're like, all right, I'm painting this with the intent of like interacting with my set, my surroundings, and my setting, and you know having that influence what I'm painting. Or it could be like if a you know interaction could be um, just that people are you know present and you could be you know, it could be like a demo or whatever like all right I'm live painting and you can watch me do this demo but like don't ask me questions don't give me in you know any of that just watch and you know it's, it's me and my perspective and you can just watch me do that so um, it can, I think it, it'll continue to vary how you define that I think. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. The. Hmm. All right. No. Uh, well, that's what I was asking you to do. What's how to define that? Um, but, <laughs> um, all right. So let. So to. So then to get make some progress in the conversation. Let's let's start defining because you're making the point. All right. So let's define it from the point of interaction being observation and comment. Like that, that, like that's the most. Like I mean, that's just a gym, that's what you deal with. Yeah. Period. Is people saying, around well, saying something, or people watching and viewing you online and typing in comments. So let's just use that as a sheer basis. Not people throwing stuff at you. Not people yeah. like other people like painting. you have to respond. Like because they can ask you questions and you're just in your zone. Like you don't have to actually say anything. You can still ignore them. Mm-hmm. But like let's just say you have to be speaking or every once in a while saying stuff or standing by you, maybe asking if they can stand and watch or take a picture. That's what you're dealing with. Um, okay. <clears throat> Let's say that's the interaction, and 
then let's say what would be let's ask the question then what would be a uh, from a spectator because um this is where the question came from like I can get to now where I'm asking all these questions coming from and that is uh, is that the what was that is that I was um discussing with the photographer um um and they are also an event host and they do audio at the event. So they so they're like a person sitting in the background, they're observing the whole event yeah. and really paying attention to the mood and the sun and just the scene. And although and they've had live paint they recently had live painters at their event, it's a major long line event. And they I we were discuss, I was discussing with them ahead of time that live painting has levels to it. Like there's different types of live painters and it makes a difference. Yeah. And they're like, I don't know what you're talking about. And I was like, well, I guess you'll, you'll see, like I said, I, I explained to them, but then I went to, uh, like, I said things exactly like what you said, like, you know, there's different ways you interact with people and deal with them and how they'll feel about the experience. And then he had two different painters. So one painter set up with an easel in the back of the room, a small easel back of the room, sat down at a table with a couple of things on the table. So it was about coffee table size, knowing the restaurant size table. So they didn't have but so many things spread out, and they had the easel set up on the set up there sitting down. Okay. Then the other artist came in and they had the artwork in their lap sitting down. And yeah, so out of the two artists, one artist sold the painting, which was the person that had it sitting in their lap or because of what they held it up. They were holding up the painting, I guess, here and there, but they had it sitting in the lap and they're working. And the other person, I don't remember them selling the painting, but they sold merchandise. Okay. Uh, who understand. Yeah, they don't know anything about numbers, not giving them to those facts, just stating that both of them sat set up in the back of the room painting. And um, I was explaining, and then I mentioned earlier that I do something different because I. Hold up. Hold up. Why did the call drop? The call drop. Who's doing it? And let them call back. It's a tricky game trying to work with these technologies sometimes, man. Maybe I'll make a call back. Didn't answer, sorry, but he's trying to call me back. So I'll let it rock. Give it a few seconds. I'm going to go chop this out of the video anyway. So we're having a conversation. I'm not gonna talk about the video now. We're having a conversation, trying to I don't know define live painting and the experience. So Kyle um, is a, a artist that I've collaborated um, with in various ways. We've done music together. Um, I've learned a lot from him as a visual artist as well. And I was just giving my, my breakdown of who you were and what we were talking about, or trying to find what we were talking about, how we got to this topic of discussion. Um, I appreciate that. Still in that space because that was a phone call from my um, babysitter with my kids. So uh -huh. I, I, it, the first one I ignored and kept going. <laughs> the second one happened, I was like, well, I, I have to take the phone call. Um, yeah. <laughs> so it wasn't anything serious, but yeah. it was uh, it was an important conversation, but not a serious one. So I'm going to have it later. Yeah. Um, <laughs> true that. True that. Yeah. Oh yeah, apologies, but in real life, okay, you can't, you can't apologize for what you have to do. Yeah, um, yeah. So, um, um, do I? I interrupt to go ahead, and then I'll go. We'll go back in. Sure. Well, I was trying to. I was breaking down like why we were even talking about live painting, and so I was trying to come at it from my understanding of your perspective, but more so your experience. Like you have been doing a lot of um, events over the past, I don't know, year or so. Um, or two, or probably just, you know, part, partly in your career too, but you've been studying your experience as, um, as a, as painting live at events. And because mm -hmm. of the, I guess, the, what I call, what's the word? It's always when you got it all together. So, but, um. Well, all right. So I can get, well, at least let me, since you say that, I will just, I'll explain, I'll give yeah. the history of me doing artwork live. There you go. And my memory. Live and so I'll go. I'm a so childhood. I'll do that. I'll do that base. I'll do one childhood story and then I'll go into real career. Right. So, childhood first piece of artwork I sold, I was seven years old and I did a drawing in my seventh grade class, a market drawing 
uh, Tasmanian Devil and no, uh, Marvin the Martian and the Roadrunner. It was one other our character in Roadrunner. But the other character I sold, I kept the Roadrunner card. Mm-hmm. And sold it for $40 to a kid in class. All right. Don't even ask me how the kid had $40 in class. Right. <laughs> Next seventh grade. Second grade. This is second grade. I was in, I was in elementary school, Miss Johnson's class. Fine black lady. I was a little kid. Uh, anyway, but, <laughs> but to that point, um, no, but she was cool. She was like a new teacher, too late. But, um, really though, uh, that I remember doing the drawing in class after doing, finishing my work and having to be quiet. They let me draw in class. So I ended up doing these drawings. Mm-hmm. And first, I just copied drawings without tracing them. And I, so I looked at them and drew them. Everybody thought I traced them. Like, no, I sat down in class and really just sat there and looked at the drawing over and drew, and drew it. Like, took forever, but did it. Drew it. Right. Um, so, did that. And, um, got in trouble for selling the drawing. Oh, what? It was, it got in trouble at first, and then I didn't get in trouble. Because I was distracting kids in class by doing the drawing in class. And then I sold the drawing on top of it. It's like, come on, Kyle. Like, dude. You, 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 like, no, nah, well, they want to buy it. I'm not going to say no to this. I, I, I won't feel this, but I want the Roadrunner one. I, I like Roadrunner. Yeah, so, right. uh, <laughs> like that. So I did the other one. But, but anyway, um, that was Tweety Bird. No, Tweety Bird. That was what it was. I drew Roadrunner and Tweety Bird, and I think a girl bought it. Yeah. Girls like Tweety Bird back in the day. Hey, I think a girl bought it. Yeah. And I like Tweety Bird too, but they call me Tweety Bird. And, but it didn't matter. I saw the Tweety Bird. That's why I was kind of, anyway, the Tweety Bird was harder to draw. That head shape was hard for me at the time. Anyway, um, to that point, that was the first time I drew something. Then, like, my career cool. So I started doing live artwork at post at, um, ca- uh, at a cafe in just doing it. And then I realized I like hanging out at the poetry scene and with musicians and the live art scene that we had in Richmond. Yeah. And there's a lot of live art get togethers everywhere. So that's when I started doing live artwork because I would just be in their doodler and when they see me doodling, they're like, yo, uh, can you hold that up? Or they mm-hmm. do, and that's how it started. I do something and they ask to hold it up. And then it became, yeah, come through anytime. You can sit up front and do whatever. You want to do some paper art. Like, and I would sit up there like them and I had, I would have my, I would have a, a biggie sketch pad because the paper was, it was really expensive, like 300 pages. It was yeah, yeah, yeah. Paper. So you can actually do darn near anything on it mediocrely. And if you have skill, it can turn out good. But it never, but it, was, it made it really good for quick work. And if I messed up, I didn't care. So um, I, I had that and I would just, so I would, at the time, I would just do live paintings and drawings of the people on stage. Just straight up really quick. And I, so I get two, three minutes of them on the stage performing. And if they like my work, sometimes people will get to perform more because they want to see me do more. Or if they were dope, they got to, so I, I was doing like, because that was my time when it was. Trying to do better work so people get the people I like doing work about like it's like it's stuff like that. So, yeah. Uh, and that's how we're doing live work. And I never had an easel. It was just every time they finished, I held up a piece and then I put it back down and did another one. I was it was just like art class. It was literally like me in art class sitting so now doing quick sketches. I got my practice in. every Wednesday, and I went to darn every spot at the time. And that literally became after I did art school and after I worked. If I had free evening, I would be at the spot. Doing just working in the studio because I was just like, at a spot. And I called my studio and I just be doing that live. Right. And, um, and I was like, you know, I spend twenty dollars, whatever. Sometimes forty dollars for a piece depending on the spot. And like, like if I was in DC, it'd be like forty dollars. Uh, like I mean, twenty dollars is nothing. So if I did twenty dollars, I darn near anybody could go. It was kind of, it was just playing around with numbers. I was playing with numbers. Never went high because they were never real life pieces. I mean, some of them were like real, like drawings. It was a real drawing. I mean, I either had to keep it for class or like some, it just depended. But yeah. it doesn't sound like you think because you're doing specific images of people. Mm-hmm. So it was like either the person wanted to buy it or it's kind of weird that you bought it. So I realized doing ambiguous artwork was, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I deal with that a lot. Yeah, you know, it wasn't working. And then it was like I'm selling their image. So it was like kind of had to ask permission. So I did ambiguous artwork where you really didn't see the face, but you got the gesture. It was just mm-hmm. like the feel. And that's what I, so that's what I learned did better. And that's what I also couldn't sell for a high price, but I could sell a lot more. Right. So, yeah. So that's, that's what I started doing. Uh, never, I think I got one or two commissions to like do a feature with somebody and actually document them doing an event, but, um, didn't really get in because of what it is. And that kind of leads, that'll lead me to what I'm doing now. Um, uh, cause I now do like that type of work where I'm a feature for an event. Like I'm specific, like I'm for the event doing a, 
Uh, yeah, so I did live art work like that, and but I got I was I had my head in doing being a high gallery stand up artist, being like this so far high profile artist. Like I'm not, well, yeah, I'm black, but I'm not. I'm just an artist and all the stuff. And I dealt with the real world. And so um, after I dealt with the real world, for my aspect, <laughs> I was like, all right, so yeah, we ain't making the money like these other people make the money. And this is making me angry. Like I mean, and I say that I met a twenty one year old artist like probably about five years ago. So like. They, they're 26 now, but I met them like they were in college. They were in college at the time when I wasn't in college and they were doing it for a bit. Mm-hmm. And they were getting 125 thousand for for their pay pieces. And you no, know, and because they had a family member, the family like I'm not. I mean, I can be very specific about who the family member was yeah. in relation. But to that point, they it was family that worked at SunTrust or and that bank in a couple of corporate places, and they just. Bought his their work periodically, mm. That's, and that was just like yeah, I get sales from them buying my work at this price periodically, and I'm like yeah, that just gave me some perspective. That's all. I mean, it wasn't rude or anything. Like I, I didn't hate on them. I wasn't mad at them, and I was like yeah. So how do I get it on? I mean, I, I was having a conversation. How do I get on this business? And how do I make these things work? And in the short, they were just like yo, it's kind of just like a basic end that I shouldn't have, but I do have, mm. and I'm. Th- how to use it. We're figuring out how to use that to do some other stuff for me, and I'm figuring out, and he's figuring out how to be a great, better artist, and all, like, just figuring out stuff. But he was like, work your angle. That was the same thing, was don't be afraid to work your angle. That was the lesson I took from him, because at the time, I had not been worried about working my angles. I mean, family art, artwork, people that family knew, other people knew, art, but I've never pushed my network as hard as I pushed making new client acquisitions. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is, and I didn't say that was to my detriment, but that's something I could have easily been using to continue and involve and add to my success. Like I've never, I've never focused on maintaining my relationships with my clients. I've just always focused on having great relationships with them that I can always go back to. Right. And like just because of time, like I'm like I, I'm like more. My goal is to be so memorable that they don't worry about the absence. It's just like I came back like an old family member. And that's not great, but I mean, that's just, like, you know, like, I know that's I know. just like, how I play. You'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's like great to see you again, what you're doing, and like my artwork and stuff. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, and you had a career that separate from that, separate from the live work from that period of time, because after I graduated, I went into, I went into more career ideas with teaching and other levels, and then live art became a way of, Teach education for doing it classes, and I was doing demos all the time and different work. And I got to tell stories about me doing art live and being like this old person in my gallery shows and all these other things I learned. Like I said, I have rallied um, on how I had to sell and do work and push stuff. But I made a living doing art, learned about that. Then I said I didn't want to do that, and uh, that way it be. And then I went into other forms of making a living, making art in different forms. And now I'm back um, doing live artwork and doing some other stuff, doing community activism to agriculture by doing my, you know, my not, work with not for profit and we're about to do artwork with that where I'm doing print work and other things, you know, merchandise stuff, you know, so they need it. So merchandise is another way to make money for a place. And that's a great way to make money with your artwork, residual income, and live artwork now. So I now am doing live painting where I do not plan my artwork ahead of time and I do the work start to finish while in front of everybody. So I literally go through the process of figuring out what I'm going to do, if I'm even going to figure it out, and the creation of it in front of people. Um, I show up at the event with supplies, I set up, and I start going based off of the, like, like, instead of me sitting in another room with a whole other vibe, planning mm-hmm. the event, planning what I'm going to do for the people, I go in the room in the space, and I that's the vibe that I plan and do out of it. If I, I mean, quote unquote, plan like I'm, because I'm in there, I'm like, all right, brown, or blue, like, or yellow, or mm-hmm. this is the first color I put the canvas, you know, like that's just it, like just like you do with other people, like, all right, so, um, uh, uh, yeah, if do I say I'm, it's gonna look like this? Sometimes I could say that I could be like, you know what, it's a good night to do something that's like a portrait or something that's like a map. I could say that, like I could, um, uh, because that's what we do when we go to the studio, but it's not really like I generally don't. Um, because there's a time, like if I only had, if it went two hours, for instance, there's a lot of events to be like two, three hours. You ain't got time to think about what you're going to do and get the painting done. Like, like, you know, that's two hours of painting, painting, time to dry, stuff has to happen. So, you right. know, like, yeah, it's, uh, that's what I, those are things I realized. Um, I will 
have a backup plan, which is like something I have an idea of something that could be that in a realm that could be cool with the event that I made, like if everything's horrible and I was required to do something, then I need to do it. Because if I'm required to do something, I can have it. So if there's a requirement, yes. Nobody ever has required me to do anything. Either they don't want they don't want to pay the price for them to ask me to do something specific. Right. Or <laughs> you know, like there's a price tag. I'm like, oh, if you want me to do something like this, then we have to do it. But if you want me to come in here free spirited on the spirit of will, you're not looking to say anything. You like if you're gonna do a dope event and I'm gonna be able to paint from your dope event, then we have no problems with me doing a great piece and it's gonna be a great night. Cool. We can do that. I don't charge them like for that and we just discuss Hey, if you want to go into auction and sell the piece, great, cool. You're putting in work for the sale of the piece, and I owe you money. If that, um, but it, it just all really depends on the negotiation of who puts effort into what. Um, I still get, I always get the majority of the money because I'm doing the majority of the work. Everything, a lot of everything is on me. Right. It has to be a mighty important event for them to take the majority to take yeah. that. I mean, like, yo, I don't know what the event has to be like, <laughs> but it has to be an amazing event. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's yeah. You can't take one. Sorry. And I'm thinking of some giant events in my head right now. But to that point, yes, I'm, I'm in there doing that. And I use acrylic paints because they dry faster. Um, and I really use whatever tools I have at my disposal. Sometimes I, I forget stuff sometimes. <laughs> and yeah, that's uh, that's what I've been doing. And if I had a way to show you photos, I'd show you photos of the work. So that would be a good idea to do right now. So, but I find that to be very different. This is part of my peers as that I described, uh, that generally do live painting. My, I think the, a good live painting, so to speak for my, cause I'm doing like, to me, I'm doing something that's super pushy on the spot type artist type stuff. Mm-hmm. Like that's, that's very, like it's not easy to, for me to do or imagine. Like I remember right. being an art demo class, he was doing a demo and it turned out dope. I was like, yo, you're magic. How did you just do this amazing piece of work in this like demo class? Like, like and that's me was teaching me what art is, and that was really like showing me what art is. That's that's like work. That's the skill. It's not the plan piece. That is, I mean, that's a master's thing in a different way. But the that whole spontaneous creation mm-hmm. is magic. That's it's just a magic thing, and for it to be a communication of the moment and stuff, that's the magic. Like that's. A singer, that's a great performer, that's a great singer, you know, that's, but you can right. sing, like, that's, that's, you know, those people, that's those things, like, mm-hmm. putting them, it's on the spot for a calculation, and they, yo, you just, <laughs> you, <laughs> it's, that's art, that's, that's, that, that's that level, and uh, that's what I appreciate, it. that's what I'm attempting to demonstrate in my work, that's like literally my idea of what I want to do in my artwork, mm-hmm. um, is to demonstrate that, that type of expression. To that point, I don't think that's necessarily what live painting has to be. To be good or great, I think live painting to be good or great is what you said, demonstrating this, demonstrating the work, the creation of the work. Uh, it's, it's, showing, it's showing them the process. It's giving the people an education on the process and completing, I think it's teaching them to be completed. I don't like live paintings that never get finished because mm-hmm. I don't think you get um Close to finish is pretty much good enough. I mean, I'm not gonna say close to finish. If it's, like, let's say if somebody is doing, um, I, I was without, like, I thought person. I don't like when people come in with started work. <laughs> like, I, I, like, I feel like that not giving the whole experience, yeah. even if it's a drawing. Because you don't know, like the drawing is, yeah, yeah, like, it's not, it's not, it's not really cheating, but it isn't the whole experience. So, right. you know, it's not, then that, that's just what I know. But I don't, I think you can come up with a drawing and do a great piece. I think if you're doing something that's realistic or a piece of work that does take more than, you know, the time allowed it. It is fair to do a, to start early, um, to do the, un, to do the base painting. Like if you're doing a portrait, a serious realistic portrait and to do the underpainting, not the real portrait, but the underpainting, that's that first layer that really doesn't matter, but does matter that takes a lot of time, but you need to get done yeah. and needs to dry. I, like I mean, like I, that makes sense because that's the job, you know. Like yeah, get get that one that has to dry and then go in after that, right? And show the people what it is to go in on the portrait. Like I'd rather see that than see the you do the underpainting and just start, <laughs> you know, wait for it to dry for thirty minutes to an right. hour, and then like, like yeah, no, we good. I don't need a conversation about underpaintings for thirty minutes to an hour. Yeah. Like uh, I just want to see, even though I, a great artist would like cause that conversation is a dope one. Underpainting is so important, mm-hmm. but you don't need to do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Live painting is a, it's just an art, it's an art education. Gym. 
that's really what it is to the art, to the consumer, to the people. And a lot of artists don't want to show that magic because some of them could be lying. Some of them are being out like there's things about it. But it's fun, you know. It's um, yeah. That's 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 where I was coming from with it. I was talking to a consumer that wasn't an artist, but definitely just a fan of something they completely didn't understand. Right. And yeah, I was, I was like, hey, what do you think of live painting? Um, and I'm still like, so like, what if I said, yeah, what do you kind of, yeah, what's your opinion on all that? Okay, so are we yeah. talking more so opinionated and, and loose conversation about live painting as opposed to like a definitive mm-hmm. definition? Well, we had it. Well, we, 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 there was already a definitive definition. I think you are, we both kind of, I agreed on what you said, which doesn't make it a real definitive definition to me. I mean, we're two people talking. How can we, yeah. like, I'm going to, I'll find it. <laughs> we didn't make I'm a definitive definition it. for the whole world. <laughs> like, for all like, people saying, ever <laughs> all people ever this is what live painting is <laughs> but alright to, to make that for, for you to get me to agree to the statement I would say this is it, I could, it would be this is what I think or this is where we are in a perception of live painting like I, it's hard for me like I yeah. said I, I'm thinking yeah <laughs> well I don't think I, I was I, think about I was mostly trying to get a sense of like what your intent right. for because I know like you know, you call me just to kind of like you know as we usually do just kind of bicker back and forth to talk about any subject or concept um but it, it felt like you know you had a, a deeper interest in trying to figure like figure something out as opposed to just like a uh, uh, live paint let's live paint what do you think you know i feel like it's more like that which i you know, i'm cool with you know either way yeah, no it's uh it is what live painting what do you think but it is deeper it is the, it's about the levels of live painting which right. does cause that mission of it where specifically to me, where do I fit in? Which I'm like, because I'm looking at where I fit in. I've had conversations with other people, which is what I described to you was like I'm seeing like from what they say and what I'm doing, it's different. And they were talking about how they want me to show up live painting for their events. I didn't get to that, and I'm just like, well, you already got these other two people. So if I jump in and do this other thing, mm-hmm. like I don't know, you can see like compared to them, like oh, All I right. do have an idea, but I don't want to be like this guy just came in and did this whole other performance that right. was. I, like you know, like, I don't want like yeah, all these well, things. Like, yeah, I think you just, about, I think you just put use the key word where you said performance because like again, I think it, it, it seems like we can break it down easily in, in like at least two different sections. There's the artist that comes in that just wants to like be in the space and do what they do, and they're you know, all right, I'm or they come, they might come in with something in mind. They already know what their subject matter is. So like, all right, I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna do a painting at this event, and you know, hopefully I can sell some merch or somebody might see me paint and want to buy the piece. Whereas you're coming in more performative, you're trying to like grasp what you're experiencing and and express that on the canvas, and so you're coming in as a blank slate, and your your work is in that regard a lot more performative, and so you're defining it for yourself as a performative art um, that's you know capturing the sense of you know the the uh, you can almost call it the zeitgeist of the moment, even though zeitgeist I guess is carried over a longer period, but it's like I'm trying to capture the the essence of this this exact moment. Whereas that it might that might happen to those other artists, but they might be pigeonholed into what they're creating because they already have it in mind. Like, oh, I'm trying to create, you know, this portrait of, you know, I mean, I've had, I've seen it happen many times. Like, I've had some friends at some other like um, events in, in Norfolk where they come in and they already got a piece that they're, they're just working on already. And it's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna show up and I'm gonna just work on my piece at this event and I can interact with people and I'm live painting at this event today, but. I'm not the feature person, uh, you know, I'm not a feature artist at this event, I'm just coming to get, you know, it's more like publicity and advertisement, um, and being mm-hmm. being able to be in a space and networking, so, you know, maybe it's, it's really that, you know, artist comes in, I'm a live paint, and this way I can network, because it'll draw attention to me, whereas you're like, I'll, I'll come and be there, but you're trying to get something a lot more, like, out of the experience for yourself, because, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a continual learning path or experience for yourself. It is, yeah. And there you go. So, yeah, absolute. Yeah, dang. Yeah. Um, so that's what I'm dealing with. Um, you pointed out two things I'm dealing with. Because what you just described is something really dope. Like, hearing, like, yeah, I think that's really dope that somebody is doing that. Um, being in, like, the third person, like, trying to do that. And to me, it's also somebody going through a process. So pricing is something I wonder about because I am skilled enough and at a whole other, and at a level to where I do, like, just cost to do stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, period. Like, it's just where my business has been. So it feels strange to say I'm going to do something for free somewhere else. Like, yeah. you, you charge here, 
and all of a sudden you just oh I can get you for free for this like you know that that's that's strange <laughs> um, just for I think the consumer regardless of how I may perceive the work like this is me like I'm not doing it under a different name like with a mask on or something where people don't know it's me like there's no alter ego type thing to where I can get away with it mm-hmm. uh, which would have been fun. but I like I was like I, I practice painting with a mask on and I forget that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no MF doom in that ain't no MF doom in that about that drink is not easy to see through. Nah, uh, so, big, yeah, that, 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 yeah, nah, I know yeah, what you're yeah, talking yeah, about that, with the uh, yeah. with the the, the, uh, the fabric for the. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know what right, you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, if anybody ever sees me do a, do a piece of art with that mask on, they must know I memorized what I was doing ahead of time. I, <laughs> I did not. I could not see what I was doing really. It's enough. It's blurry, so nothing yeah. is clear when I do. Mm-hmm. So, uh, that, that's just. Um, <laughs> which would be really dope. I would love to practice that and do that. But um, yeah. like I said, I want somebody to pay me. I need to be paid enough to do certain things. There's no time with three kids and family and stuff mm-hmm. in this life to, that I can ex- just put all that aside to focus on that skill right. to then do it. But payment would allow me to do a little bit. Of, it wouldn't take me long. But anyway, doesn't matter. So that's what I think about. Um, I do have, I don't even have prices in mind. I, I do, like I have prices for, I have prices for the pieces that I sell now. Because I've been selling pieces enough to know what the price is. It's like eight dollars per square inch, which does put a lot of artwork into the thousands, which I'm yeah. happy about. Which is crazy. eight dollars per square inch. You're like that doesn't add up. It adds up. <laughs> yeah. It really does. Yeah. It does. It does. Yeah. Um, like if I said six dollars was a discount, that's the cut. That that I noticed it in my pocket. It's a big yeah. difference. In the, in the yeah. Uh, um, yeah. So yeah, because I just did like the last live painting I did was like. Was it two thousand? No, it was six thousand three hundred and eighty-five square inches times eight. Yeah. yeah. No, oh no, it was two thousand. It ended up being sixteen thousand something. Yeah. Like doing about eight. It was fifty thousand dollars painted off of base wholesale price, mm-hmm. not off of calculate. And that's just what I'm charging for. So that, that was a trip. I was like, wow, dang, I'm there. That was nice to see. I was like, I'm there. I'm there. Okay. So I was like that, that. That put a lot of pressure on the piece that side. It had to be worth it. Uh-huh. Um, and that was a lot. So interesting topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to write is... that down. <laughs> does the yeah, does not... the the price that you put on the artwork change the like? Uh, what's it called? The the effort that you put in. It's interesting. It made it focused the effort. I'm not gonna say right. it, it didn't change the effort. I, because the effort got me that price in the first place. So it focused it, though, because it made me say, if I do a piece that's larger than that size that sold at this price, it must be more valuable than that piece. And I have a calculated measurement now to say that. Because what I did was I took the dimensions and the square inches of the pieces, of all my of pieces and average the price of them. Mm-hmm. And that average gave me an average for the per square inch of my work. At least at that size. Yeah. So anything I do longer, I should be able to multiply by that, and it should make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did, that was it. So doing the piece, I'm like, well, it has to be worth this. And like, no, like the joke is that calculation was less than what some people thought I would price to work at. Some people thought I priced to work at like twenty five thousand or something like that. They were like minimum ten, like but shoot twenty some odd twenty like quick off top like mm-hmm. they were just looking at the size. Yeah, the home that this would be in, like any of this, mm. I do work. Like I wouldn't want to see it in a place that was like, like just all the things that yeah. you look at the work and what it fits with. Not not trying to be like it belongs here with an ego. Just no, nah, I got you. Where where would a group where where would people want to see it on display? That's what they were discussing. That's what I asked them, and they were, I'm like, huh, I got you. Okay, like thank you, thank you for the compliment because. Yeah. I haven't had time to sit back and observe it yet because <laughs> you know just do, that was in the moment with the live piece when we talk about talking to the audience and interacting mm-hmm. that's what i interact with. like they come up and people will come up some people because i'm dealing with people that be drinking sometimes or something like how much would you charge for this I'm like, and i'll tell them straight up i don't know yet i'm still working on it well what do you think while i'm working not not stopping just this mm-hmm. i'm trying not to think about what i'm saying too i'm not because I'm, I'm focused on the piece yeah man i know the so will lead to me doing something about the conversation in the piece because I'm like here I'm right. accidentally draw what I'm saying by like you know like yeah. if you really like something like that accidents happen so I'm like I don't want to fo- I don't want to be too focused on it and then, so yeah and doing that it's funny because uh, you get whatever answers you get all these different answers I say whatever I never know what I'm gonna say they they say whatever sometimes I'm mm. by accident and what happens and it's whatever um, but 
Like I get those answers. I get those spontaneous answers. So yeah, dude, yeah. Uh I've not sold pieces because people didn't want to pay the low price. They wanted to tip me higher and give me be able to give me money for stuff and then I'll talk to them about payment plans and then made a sale or mm-hmm. like you know, it's, it's how consumers can be when you present something like you care about it. Yeah. Because um, that's really what, like, I'm, like, I'm doing it, like, like no, I'm, like, I'm presenting it, like, no, I really care about the work I'm doing. Even if I'm doing it in an hour, two hours, I'm very focused, this mm-hmm. is very intentional. Like, this is, like you say, like I, like I described, I'm attempting to be in the same realm as any person trying to make a solution in that period of time. Like, I got to hack the system, like you see, in, like, all this stuff, this, this, whatever, I'm trying to be in that realm just for a period of time and do that. Whatever it is, don't know what it's going to be, but just done. Yeah. So um, that's um, yeah, um, in art. Um, so yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's um, I've been trying to figure out a price set. I've been figuring out. I have prices on pieces. I've been looking at where I fit in, and like I want, like I. So we did the discussion to me on what it was, and to me, define like if you want, let's go back and define it thing. Uh, uh-huh. I, we changed something. Yeah, we- <laughs> Let's get that done real quick so you can have that excerpt for your video. And edit. This is going to be bad editing. I'm sorry. It's going to be cool bad editing. Yes, yeah, it's hella edit. <laughs> but, um, I think, like, because I said it before, but I'll say it again. I think live painting is um, painting in front of people. And I think good live painting is demonstrating w- your skill in front of people. Mm-hmm. That generally requires finishing the work. Well, like, that's it. That, that's that's what I think live painting. And live art, if somebody's doing a sculpture and all of that. Uh, when you said a mural, that did remind me that live painting is broader than that, but I was thinking about specific scenes. Mm-hmm. But to a mural, exactly that. If you're doing a live a mural, you don't finish it in a day, but you do you do make it available to people to see you do it to right. finish. Specifically. Like, yeah. you, don't, uh, you don't not a mural. Like, right. Like, yeah. Or well, unless they don't pay you, and it's like, oh, the job's done, and that's the artwork. This yeah. is the unfinished work of people that didn't pay me because the state yeah. ran out of a budget, and that's, uh, that's yeah. a whole other piece. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so that, that's my definition. That's where I've defined it off of all the years I've been experiencing live painting. I've watched live painters. Mm-hmm. I've seen performance. Performance painters are different. Yeah. They like what I'm talking about, but they actually are like doing it to entertain, which is not what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I'm considering it. But I'm not doing it to entertain. Right. Um, they are, they're like doing a piece probably within a certain kind of time, and they may flip it upside down and do it sideways and do things to keep it interesting. And we watch we watch the videos of performance painters, and they do amazing work. They're, and barely do they do it with the intention of the subject. There are some of them that have uh, the, the intention of a communication of an idea. But um, sometimes they do it for a purpose. But generally, it's just for entertainment. Mm-hmm. Um, Famous per- it's a portrait of a famous person and some cool colors or any of that stuff. And they're using art techniques that allow that, like splash painting and print yeah. stamping and block stuff and monochromatic work. They're doing the techniques that allow that. I don't care about any of that stuff. I'm just, I'm, I'm considering all those things, mm-hmm. but I'm just, all right, the event's this long or I have this much time and that's that's what I do consider. Cause I'll be like, all right, when's the last? When am I at the last hour? When am I at the last thirty minutes? And that's the. I don't care about the last ten to five. I don't allow that to, to judge my work. Yeah. But I do care about like, all right, cause I use that to say I need to switch to a different process. Like now, like in the beginning or most of it, I'm like, I'm just gonna do whatever mm-hmm. is in the moment. And then I'm, right, I got an hour left, and I need to make sure this looks good. So let me at least focus on it looking good now for the last hour, whatever that may be. Let me just not just listen or feel whatever is happening. Let me say some of these marks are going to clean up or finish this work now, whatever they are in that realm of whatever. If it's going to be whatever green, it's going to be a clean, mm. green mark, not just whatever green mark. And, um, that's what I do in the last hour, in the last 30 minutes. I'm like, okay, does it look like something? What are the touches that need to happen to make it look like something? And I don't care whatever that is. Even if I make a mistake, it's not a mistake. It's what's supposed to be there, and I just need to make it work because that is what's, that, that's how I carry it. I don't carry it like it's a mistake because, you know, it's in the moment. It's like right. really that is, and I, I really do carry it like that, and it's, it, it turns out I'm, 
I don't want to play, but it turns out amazing. I feel like as I did a mark on this one piece that was like right across the body that made no sense if I was looking at it like it made no sense. But I just kept going with it. I was like, yo, that's like the pattern for the drum dancing, and that's exactly what needed to be right there. And what do you know? This definitely had yeah. like it just every time I do it, it's like this definitely has to be something because look at that. I have I honestly can say I had no conscious intention on it. So that's cool that the subconscious of my if you want to say just scientifically, I'm so skillful because of all the work I've done and drawings I've done throughout the years that subconsciously I make good marks yeah. on the style of doing because I've done the style for so long. That's what that could say scientifically without trying to be spiritual. Being spiritual, we can say I'm guided or whatever, and that happened, and that's great. Mm -hmm. Or ancestors, whatever, we can go into that. Either way, I'm not even caring about that because I can only focus on the piece of the moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, cause that's what, like, if I think about any of that, it influences the piece. Mm -hmm. and that's like not like it's really like it's that space. Like it's that, and that's that's what's so enjoyable. It's the it's. Rare, it's the rare freedom. Like I'm saying, it, like I'm just so excited about it. It's like the rare freedom I get in life. It's like these moments, and I, it takes so much out of me. I don't even want to do them all the time, but they're like I'm excited to have the chance to do them. And uh, yeah, um, cool. And like it, it gives me motivation to practice and do other things and allow others to influence it. So yeah, um, there's a lot of talking, but yeah, that's the definition of live painting. Um, that's the definition of I, I don't know what we could do because I don't think that's live performance thing I'm curious what this is defined as I think that's what I was calling you about mm. what the heck do we define what I'm talking about as because right. it well, yeah, yeah I'm describing this whole moment that's not just art it's like it's the zone but it's it's, it's a directed zone it's all these, it's this different thing that we all experience and I'm just saying I do it with art mm -hmm. but um, that's it we're doing it with art, and we all do it with art at different times. I'm just putting my butt on the line and do it in front of everybody. Right. <laughs> it's freestyling. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking earlier as you were like talking about. It. I was like, this is like people like the difference between people defining like what freestyling is because. People can get up on a radio station and be like, all right, yeah, we got this freestyle from so and so, but it's just like a couple of written verses put together. That don't you know if if you take if you take those type of freestyles and put enough of them on you know record enough of them for a CD then you got a mixtape because it's just a bunch of free verses that you didn't really have any intent or idea or concept behind but then you got people who really rap off the top of their head that they're like all right I'm just here and I'm just rapping and as the moment goes on they either get better at it or they just might not be in the mood because um, I mean I have, honestly when I freestyle. Like, the, the the moments I get in the freestyle mode, it's, like, usually my best ones are when I'm driving and I get in the mode and I'm able to see... When I, when I have more to take in, I feel like my freestyles come out better as opposed to if I'm just, like, sitting in the space, like, yeah, I'm going to try to freestyle right now and I got to try to, like, make something. Like, there's, there's not enough moving and freestyle is such a free, like, so, such a constant thing that I feel like, like, physically I need that to be reflected in, like, how I'm moving. So, like, if I'm moving fast down the road, I can just rap about things that come to mind and throw in whatever's around me. So, um... I think it, it's it's you call it freestyle live painting. Okay, that's so long to say. Freestyle, um, freestyle, but, <laughs> freestyle. Just call it freestyle. <laughs> it's a freestyle painting. I just it's freestyle, it's freestyle painting. Freestyle painting. It happens to be live. Yeah. Um, yeah. It really could be an art. Actually, it could be. It is. An, it could be an art style. And I could say that you do freestyle painting when you are doing. At least your studies are studies are generally freestyle painting because you're not worried about it. You're just in the zone of making. Like, because you'll do color theory stuff, and I'll listen to you talk about what you're doing, and you literally aren't thinking about it. You're reacting. Like, I'm gonna mm -hmm. do this now. I'm gonna do this now. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's what. That, that's it. Like, why? Because I just I'm gonna learn from this experience of doing it. Correct. And um. Yeah. Yeah. That. Um. I have. Freestyle painted my like freestyle painting is that doodle in your in the journal like the side of the shape you know like all that yeah. that's where the patterns and from honestly it comes from those and I actually learned in the African hit in in African art class and African history, American history class and something like about the patterns and how they actually connected and how I may be doing symbols that harken stuff but mm -hmm. I didn't do it intentionally and I still do my best not to but I have studied the stuff better to have a clearer idea of what I'm doing right. which I think influences my work now and. uh and I, but I do my best to forget about those things and try not to draw any sort of symbol. Like in the, like I do my best. So I actually am I'm not doing my work to the highest caliber because I'm probably not putting certain symbols in that I'm supposed to put in. 
Because I I'm like might be avoiding it sometimes now that I think about it. So mm. I need to make note of next time I do some work, like it's a, like don't avoid the symbol that pops in my head and see what happens. Right. Because um, yeah, if if, if yeah, especially like, in a I think especially in a moment where you're like channeling, then like everything that's coming to mind needs to be addressed. Otherwise, you're like you're you're halting the channel. You know what I mean. So if 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 you if you you know if when you're like purposely trying to create, and that you know you're like, oh, I know about this symbol that I used to practice, and this piece is not going to be about that. Then obviously you wouldn't put it in there. But if you're channeling and you have enough, again, it's the same same as like you do you get enough research of something like eventually the the purpose of that research is going to come to fruition and you're going to be like all right it's time to implement this and put this into practice and so if that comes into those moments when you're creating and, and channeling your you know what i mean mm-hmm. whatever's guiding you in that regard then it's like all right it's time to put it in there it's it's uh it's more of the symbols are too specific like it's like it's too high resolution like, like yeah like, I, hate, like, I feel you i feel you i feel you it's like oh let me throw this a dinger stamp in there real quick <laughs> like to what that symbol represents in the simple form so it communicates cross-dimensionally because of my right. understanding like so I'm like okay the point of that symbol though is the, is the sphere of this and that and the line here and that so i'll allow those to happen i just mm-hmm. won't because also time like i'm like again we're thinking about time I'm like all right let me not focus on making sure because if i do that then it may need to be clear or this i'm just like no sphere this that that mark cool next and like go through it so I guess I don't, but I do. So I'm just either way. I'm gonna I'm gonna pay attention to it. That's my point. Yeah. I'm gonna pay attention in the th- like. Cause it's a third person type out of body thing where I'm like I'm doing stuff and I'm observing while it's happening, and but I can't observe too long. And piano p- musicians know exactly what people know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Like where you're doing something, and you're like just yeah, yeah. Um, so, but in the, in, the, um, in the in the essence of like what you're doing, because the whole experience is so abstract and and it reflects in the work, then like. For the like you said, like the high resolution image that comes in your mind that you're like avoiding putting in, like all right, let me do this perfect spiral symbol in there since that just popped in my head. But as opposed to doing that, you figure out a way to like implement that concept through you know abstracting it in your into your design to where you know you're not like putting stamps in your work and it's just this like graphic design piece now. Then you're not really avoiding it. You've you've your your mind your mind is already like you know breaking it down into its essence. And then you're applying it to how it relates to that piece because the whole piece isn't that simple either. The piece is about everything else that's there too. So then it's like, this is how much, like, you know, it's like a percentage. Like, all right, well, this piece is only like 2% this idea or concept. So it's not like I could put this whole symbol in there because that'd be representing 100% of it. But that's not all this piece is about. So in that regard, it seems like you, you still are, you know, addressing what's coming to mind. So it might just be a matter of like, Hearing that from somebody being like, all right, so I am doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Or um, or just, you know, like being aw- that much more aware of it that you're like, all right, cool. Now that I know what I'm doing, I can like more freely, you know, not question that as I'm, you know, painting. And just be like, all right, that symbol, let's get it in there and then let's get it out of there, you know. And to that point of hearing you say it, what I heard, what I translated from what you said because I heard listening to it, I heard... I, you didn't say this, but I'm like, okay, yeah, you're right. If I practice more certain symbols or things like that in my gesture or work, I could get them in the work faster or better, and it could possibly be communicated in the work. And I also remember the past, um, which is what you stated when you were looking at the the recent work I did, and I had this, the close-up images and the whole piece. And you, and without me telling you, I didn't talk to you beforehand. You thought I did multiple pieces. I think that's what you said. You thought I no. did a small app. Oh, that wasn't you. No. Okay. No, I had a friend that thought I did multiple <laughs> At least you don't admit to it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember what I said to you about it, so I'm like, nah, that wasn't it. I did address the same thing, but I, I was aware of what I was seeing. Yeah, okay, yeah. So you addressed it, yeah. Uh, yeah, right, you did address it. All right, so my, somebody else said they thought I did a bunch of pieces at the same time. Mm-hmm. And, 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 because they all, because, um, like, different scenes. Because yeah. I do draw little details. I actually do, like, when I do those symbols, will end up being maybe an inch big in, like, a button. Yeah. Or, or what, what, what symbolizes a button. Because it'll be a circle I drew earlier, or it could be a red spot that I drew, a white spot around that ended up making a circle, and then I made that a button, or mm-hmm. whatever ended up, like, I don't, you know, whatever. Yeah. Like, I'm just saying, what do with that shape. Uh, that. So, it'll be stuff like that. And... 
it's like it's, it's like those prize. It's like when I, I it's funny. It's just I get it's crazy how much it reminds me of the work I did in my notebook, where I was just doodling on top of doodling on top of doodling. But this is different, but the same thing. Like. It's the exact, it's like, yeah, this it's is crazy. That's all. I was like, yeah, Give, giving me a bigger space and not saying I'm going to focus on this tiny spot, mm-hmm. turning to creating an image versus turning, making patterns. And it's really just one giant pattern stacked on top of itself over and over and over again because it's a mark and a mark and a mark. Like, yeah, it's just, yeah, the abstract mark making project. Um, I'm just babbling, but that abstract mark making stuff I do, where I do a mark that symbolizes something that I abstract it, it's the same thing. Um, it's, yeah, it's just a combination of all my work. Yeah. So, yeah, like getting the price in it again. I right. really don't know about how to price work because it's a combination of all my work every time. And price it high. <laughs> I don't have space for it. <laughs> I mean, like I'm doing these like they, I like I now only want to do them like four by like a minimum like four feet big. Yeah. Like, I, I want room to work. Like all yeah. the knowing that I can that. And it felt so good to just like have room to work versus like confined, right. confined in my office. I was like, no, this felt way more in the moment. Big circle and mm-hmm. yeah, let me, step, let me step all the way here and take this giant slash and crap. Right. And, like my bad, I didn't mean to get you. Um, uh, interactive, like right. I said, I accidentally. <laughs> like, you know, it's interesting yeah. though because like as you were exp- like explaining earlier, like the two other artists that you saw at the event that had you know coffee table size painting lap painting like when you come in with something that's you know four foot by three foot or four foot by five foot like you automatically become a part of the experience because like you're just intrusive at that point you can't hide it you know what i mean but like in in the good way but it's like all right i'm here i'm present whereas if you can hide yourself in the corner it's like you're just a guy doodling in the corner almost it's like oh yeah i'm i'm just here capturing a few you know i'm just trying to practice or study whereas like you know, it's almost like those artists were there, like doing some sketches and, and getting some practice in. Whereas you're like, all right, <laughs> like your name's on the bill at this point. You know what I mean? It's like, so y'all got to pay me for being here now because I'm I'm doing something. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's where, and I should say, I'm I don't think I I, I don't think the audience realizes I'm there yet, or they don't know how to interpret me. And I am figuring out how to communicate that. Like I was like, all right, I have like they just video. I have people videoing me doing live painting now and stuff. So I've been co- collecting stuff. But like, so I'm gonna do on my site. I'm gonna put the video up of me live painting. I'll put some series of work up, and I'll put me talking about my. I hopefully have some of this video edited. Maybe that could help me. Or I'll be. I have this practice, so I'll do another video of me talking about how I live paint, mm-hmm. and I'll have the writer. So I'll do that as a presentation and package, and then I can put a price next to it, like you do a press kit. That's what it would be. Is a press yeah. kit like performance painters do because i am something like a performance painter yeah but i can explain it and be like more professional because i think I, I would think this is something that you would do in, at a museum with it. like you would do at a jazz event at a museum somebody would have this or yeah. you would like stuff like that you would have and concerts you would have that if it's festivals you would have this it, i could do a mural like now i'm understanding like it could be we want to hire you to do a mural of the city, and you're gonna listen to the birds, and I want you out here painting for ten days. Like, oh, I'll say, I'm that thing. That'd be actually dope. It would suck and be dope. Like ten days straight painting the giant wall, and you have to be, and I would be out there. Right. <laughs> I haven't. I, yeah. I haven't. I haven't gotten to the double digits doing any public art projects before, which is crazy now that I think about it, but. I guess it, it, I wouldn't say it's a scale thing, but I was like, we did a whole street design in like two days, <laughs> you know, it was like a hundred feet. So, yeah, but I, I think it's interesting that as much as hard as I work and what used to be like, so you remember me talking about being a gallery artist and all just all the years of my artwork and what I've done and pushed for. I'm I'm gonna say I'm giving up on that. Like it's, it's not that I have. Like it's just like I'm not. It's never been my. I've I've realized that I've only been pushing for it because that's what I thought was the best thing for me. Right. And, and like, the option that I had. Mm-hmm. And I realized, not, not because I hadn't figured out how to kind of carve my own lane that was me. Right. Which is, to me, a big point of, like, what I am about overall with my work. And, and uh, maybe you just also hadn't seen enough examples of what it is that you enjoy doing now to be like, oh, this is a way I can, like, continue to, you know, pursue 
my direction as opposed to like, oh, well, I've seen examples of people in the gallery, so I'm gonna go that way for now and see if how that works. But it's like, mm-hmm. you know, and, and yeah, and then, you know, it, the times have caught up to like you being able to do stuff the, the way you want to do them now. So, well, I don't think the times have caught up yet, but oh, all right, I, um, <laughs> but, I, but I, like, but I'm a believe, I'll say, I, I want to believe they have because I, that's because getting my way. So let's believe they have, and I'm gonna move forward on that. The I, I like, I, I'm gonna speak on, like you said, there were past, I will always want to be that artist that was a conceptual art. They could be in a gallery. They got paid mad money for just sitting in a gallery room because it was a great idea and they had this great explanation. Right. Like, not, not, not one. I always wanted to, like, be that that respected in my thoughts mm-hmm. and concept. Example of, because I thought that was, like, the echelon of any culture to have a, your culture respected in that way that you could, that somebody just says, yeah, y'all are that, tell, yeah, this. Like, mm-hmm. and just for, like to say it as a black person, like I want to do it as a black person, yeah, but I just really want to do it as me, like as a person that looked and acted like me that was different than different types of people. Not saying like, but I'm just different in other ways too, because I've been in black classrooms and been different than the black people. So I mean, it ain't like I'm just a person yeah. in the sense of different. I like, represent when I have my glasses on and stuff, because that's I don't see well and that. I want to represent for us, <laughs> for us glasses where people that <laughs> can get dropped and dry lips and yeah. stuff like that. Like, you know, I, like, we could be respected too and stuff. So, like, yeah, like, I wanted to represent for us. Um, <laughs> it sounds like, to me more like, like, your art like, is, because for many people, I would say, like, the, like the gallery artists, like, their art is that it's seen by, you know, people in the gallery and that's really all that, that's really all, like, that you need to know about the artist that, like, okay, you see my work and you can appreciate what's on the wall, but you want, Sounds like you want more, more so people to appreciate the experience of what, you creating, and the the end product is just what you get to take home. But um, uh, not even yeah, you, but the. the well, I, when you said it, you gave me clarification, and I said it while you were talking. Okay. I want people to appreciate what's behind the work, not mm-hmm. what the work is. Mm-hmm. Like I don't want. Like, my whole thing about people is I want people to appreciate people for who they are and not what they look like. It's the same concept. It's, yeah. And my, my real serious conceptual work is the stuff based out of W.D. Boy's work and the idea of dual perception and living and having the... Like, I was doing the astronaut suit that reflected the world around you because people would try to fit in and be a chameleon in the world, but they feel in a different way. Like, that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. So, like, it's that concept of... We're actually these spirit. We're these beings inside of the this body that we have. No matter how you look at it, right? Um, that's how we feel. Even if we fit, the, that still we fit what we are in. That doesn't change that we feel like something in something. Um, so that's like that's the idea. So I, I'm using this work as a subliminal thing and as a subliminal message and a conscious and a secondary message that it's not about what you see it's about all the stuff going on and it, and that's what messes with people that's why that's why i say people aren't ready yeah. because when i when i start explaining what i'm doing they don't want to believe that's what i'm saying i'm doing even though they're, they like they're Watch seeing me. me do it and it's happening and i'm telling them i didn't come here with anything like you saw me walking here with nothing you saw me set up you saw me like literally splash a blob on the canvas and just keep going in and mm-hmm. you want to believe i planned that you want to believe i planned it to the t that it's going to look this like this mm-hmm. no like you think it looks amazingly good that's cool i literally haven't had time to observe and judge whether i think it looks that good right <laughs> because i'm just now doing the piece like i haven't had time to be like to sit with it right like you want me to get price like if you buy it now almost whatever price you give me is like you literally pay me for the materials and what i did because i haven't had time yet to, yeah. like, like this is it like i don't know what to tell you i just huh Oh, you want this is street art. You like that This is this is somebody drawing. This is just like me drawing on the side of the street to make some money to get something to eat. Just cause, like I, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> That's what that it's just like that in the spirit, without the idea of me trying to sell something. Like yeah, I, like in that time I was trying to do something for sale, but it's like the same spirit of the freedom and quick work. Mm-hmm. Like I can't tell you work. What you get until I look at it. Um, right. And I'm talking about now is I should need. I need to have that idea because it is valuable it's right. super valuable because yeah i'm doing what i've been wanting to see somebody else do and i realize i'm the person to do it 
and I'm just trying to be, and I'm working to be, I'm going to continue to work to be better at it, so mm-hmm. I need to be funded to be better at it, because people are showing me that they appreciate it. Right. So, like, it's a cycle, like, it's like, oh, that's why, like, if they didn't appreciate it, then I ain't going to be trying to figure it out, and I need to price and figure out if it really is worth it to them, and put it in the right audience, too, because they say it needs to be here, so I need to be here before I quit, like, mm-hmm. I can't be in, until I've actually tried it in the space and it didn't work. Mm-hmm. So, I think, it should be in this type of setting and that type of setting, like like I say, the museum or some type of setting. So until I do the stuff in that setting and it does or doesn't work, I can't give up on this activity yet on saying that it is. Or I can't step back and reevaluate it right. on that point. That's how I play my stuff. Now. I'm not even trying, like I'm trying not even tell myself what to do. I'm going to let <laughs> the environment tell me what to do right. with the work. Like, <laughs> would you, in that regard, would you... I'm gonna just give the example first, and before asking you if you would do it, because it's like a, it's almost like a leading question, I guess. But um, like right before I left Norfolk, they had they we were doing um they had the, our first uh, art battle, right? And I was just a judge there, which was dope, because I got to just experience it and see it for what it was, and not have to participate. In which I was able to determine that like that wasn't the spe- that wasn't the space for me. You know I mean, I was like, nah. I appreciate what they all just did too much to be like in here trying to compete. Um, but the like the parameters of that setting was pretty much a two hour period. There was events and stuff going on, music, some you know, a whole lot of live stuff happened. So there's an experience happening, but there is a competition element that that exists in there. But pretty much, you know, you just get two hours to do your thing, and you know. One of the stipulations that we made that we probably didn't stick strong to was that we were uh, the people were supposed to come in without a planned, you know, design or whatever. Just come in there and do something, um, kind of on the spot, you know, and, and and hopefully try to do something outside of the realm of what we might know you for. Um, yeah. Which in that regard, like, it's harder for somebody that's a maybe figurative artist to be like, oh yeah, let me come in here and try to pull a figure out the air, where somebody who has <laughs> more abstract work is like, all right, let me come in here and. You know, but like, also there was a, there was a, I feel like, you know, there were artists that were, we were more familiar with. So it was like, ah, uh, like for them to step outside of their realm and do something different would be like, you know, taken away from them. Whereas somebody else who we might not be that familiar with could do their thing and we'd be like, oh, that's hot. It was like, yeah, I do this all the time. It's like, oh man, we supposed to take points off of that. But anyway, um, I say that because the person who won the first one and the third one, um, if he, it, it, I, your your explanation of your experience sounds like what I witnessed from him, and what he yeah. described. He he partly won his because of his description of what he was doing. He was like, yeah, nah, I just came here, was putting marks down, and I heard this, so I put that down, and then I heard this other mm-hmm. thing while I was playing, so then I changed it up, and then, you know, so he ended up with this piece that was a a, a mix between a dog and a and a cop. And then he was like, yeah, I heard something in a lyric that said something about time. So then I drew a, a, a symbol for like a time thing. And then I drew a clock up here. And so he was like, I was like, Man, I watched you do all this stuff. I didn't know why he was doing it. I was thinking, you know, um, you know, I was like, it was just fun watching. I was like, he could, in my head, I was like, he could have been done like half an hour ago. But he kept working and, and it kept transitioning and changing. And he worked to the T really. And it all still worked out in, in the end as far as like him having a, a powerful enough piece. And for it to have like, and even like the concept that he came up with sounded like something that somebody would have took time to like research and plan. But it was like, nah, it just came to mind while I was there because I heard something or I saw something. And so it was just like, it all happened in that moment. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and, and well, to say that, that that is why, that's what I really think can be dope about this approach to work. It can never, you can't copy somebody else's work and it's always from you. Like, I can't say a word about what that person did, and I could, ne- and even no matter what it looked like, you can't never say it's wrong or messed up because it just is what it is. It was mm-hmm. this thing for the period of time and that, and yeah, what you're appreciating is that them in that moment and that and what they represent and what they connect to. Right. And I can't say it does vary based off of you as a person, like your moment. Like if you're sad and depressed, like I actually went, I went across country to Oregon and had yeah. the whole thing with my family and stuff, and was like that for and took a break. And all my work was dark. Everything I did was dark hue. No matter how I finished, it was just they were. All, I have I have them around here. They're dark hue. Mm-hmm. They are, like all of them are back to. They look gothic. They have the gothic type that just hey, theme to it or something. Right. Like, 
make it bright. I, I painted the white all over just to try to make it bright. <laughs> and stuff like, brighten this up. God, I, I, why did I do all this? Dang, this is sad. Um, it's like angry and sad and stuff and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, but um, I'm just saying, it does reflect the person as well, with, no matter how you do it. It's a connection. And that's what I think is dope about what he said. Like, they're drawing dogs. I'm like, I would never draw a dog. Right. Intentionally, at least. All that in my head. I'm like, the full dog? I'd never. I'd start to mark and tell and hope I heard something else to make me change the line shape to do something else. And it'd be, it'd be like some dog house, German, like any something something weird. Mm-hmm. Shape. That's what I hope to accomplish, to be so free in the moment. But also, like... Completely wish I drew a dog sometimes. Like I'm like, yeah, that, that sound like a, like would you describe something like a really dope piece, like a whole bunch of right. stuff put together? Sound really dope. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, moment. I mean, it was it was. I mean, as far as like the look of it, it was de- definitely in like the the vein of a, a Basquiat, where you know okay. it was, yeah. you know everything was, was super abstracted and and kind of like you know I wouldn't say skulls, but his his work in general looks like that. So it still fit his like his style. It wasn't he was like he was doing something. You know, like trying to look like something in in particular. But as far as like just the the the. Um, the aesthetic of it, it, it kind of fit that style. So even though it might have been like a dog, it was like you know a real abstracted version of what, what you might have expected it to be. Well, now we're going into a whole other conversation about the other the other point of niches. Because uh, what we because to go back to where we started, we started with the different forms and directions you can be in live painting and different levels. Mm-hmm. And it's not really levels, but. They are. They were looking at it as the idea of levels of professionalism or performance. Yeah. The levels of performance, to where it's more and more of a performance versus more and more of a painting focused thing, mm-hmm. and more of a performance versus demo. I think that's what we can yeah. say. We have demo. Yeah. That. And, yeah. Yeah. That, that's probably the range. So we, we created that range, and now we're going to talk about the whole other thing, which goes into everything, art, which is niche and audience, who you appeal to, because. When you say they doing Basquiat and it's like it's just who they appeal to or what they're looking for with their work versus in their background what they study. Like I study, like I talk about studying the African stuff and the, I study so many American culture and, and indigenous culture and I plants and I study symbols and I study weird stuff. Like yeah. you know, I be studying like I study like the what I study what those Afrocentric people be studying and mm-hmm. I study what. The, Islam with those like Islamic people and the Caribbean people and the apothecary people and the, I study science like I read science journals and medicine books and like I mean like I be reading the background stuff of culture like that's yeah. what I try to pull from is like as far as me to filter myself is like I pull from like I try to pull from these other groups like I study astronomy from you know other, the people that Neil deGrasse talks about yeah. not just Neil deGrasse looking up like you know like i mean like oh you mentioned let me check out yeah. this person that you had an argument with or something like if you do it like that's me that's what i piddle with on youtube and everywhere else and books so to say that and they have that like i don't i don't i looked at basket but i haven't i studied him but that was just uh yeah that was like that's part of my art study was just mm-hmm. to know about it right practice basket yeah. like i, I might have done i probably have 10 to 20 pages that might resemble something to bask at in, a, in some sketchbooks over time. Mm-hmm. But in, but it's not, but to say that, that's probably with every artist I've studied. Right. Like, um, yeah. so that's like, that just to say he fits in there. Yeah. Um, I've given him some due credit, but I haven't, like, worried about it. Um, so everybody has their way of approaching work, and that's what I love about it. It's dope. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, like, that's what I try to get in my work. And that's why I guess I can't focus on one thing in my work, because I just described a study issue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just described a big focus issue just now, so when it, just, that just that, that that explains why my work looks to me messy until it, I fo- until I get to the end of it. Like mm-hmm. when I'm free from doing it, it's messy, and that's why I have to give my that in like my life. I have to give myself checkpoints to be like, "Yo, time to narrow this in, Kyle. Or yeah. else is going to you're going to keep going, and yeah. you nothing you've done is realized because that wasn't the goal. The goal was to get it down and make the mark." Uh, and to get a point across like it, it's a mark if you really focus on it you can mm-hmm. see that it's really this um so that like that was like so that's the approach it's different and that's what that's kind of where i also get into if i'm in this realm like we say so we can name this freestyle painting you now compare me to somebody that does that did a freestyle painting even though it, i've looked online i've looked around it's i i'm gonna look at freestyle painting now and see if there is a real thing because that might actually be a real thing but I haven't found the study any live painting enough paint live painting and people doing work like mine to compare myself and what I'm doing to what they're doing to say like mm-hmm. how I kind of fit 
like a level of it. Like, am I doing this well? Like, should I be able to do this? Because I mean, I have a friend. I have friends that were illustrators that do work fast, but they're also doing it with a goal and a mm-hmm. point. Um, and like, I'm doing it with a goal and a point two, quote unquote, just not the same idea. Like, they're like, I'm gonna do. I have a buddy, um, GN, um, Google. I can't think. I can't say his name right now, but I see it. And he does he does the UFC fight posters, the black and white ones with the splatter paint. And he figured out an approach that, that he does them really big now with um, rollers. He uses a roller brush. And so that allows him to do a straight line. And if you wave it, you know, if you use a roller properly, you can make way thick and thin lines. So yeah. he actually is like rolling an arm and rolling this. So he's knocking out pieces fast and then splattering paint and using stuff to do them. But he also spends time planning his pieces. Like I need, like he draws it on a computer sometimes first. Yeah. Or he'll design it in the computer after he does it. And it doesn't matter because he's mm-hmm. like, his, but he's he's done live pieces too. I've seen him do a, done it live. He might have done three of them live um, that I've seen. He might have done more. Um, just checking, just studying because I noticed that he doesn't. I'm like, yo, I need to check my buddy out because uh, I always like him. I've always been a fan of like his way of approaching illustration. Right. Um, so I've always like, I'll just check him out once in a while. So um, when I saw he did live pieces, I'm like, cool. You're not doing it like me, but I really, I, I gotta take notes. Um, mm-hmm. That roller idea is. Genius. <laughs> yeah. Like I used to do that in the room, but I never decided to actually do a real person. I'm so glad I saw somebody do a real person with a right. roller. Uh, like, yo, it is that easy and that hard. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the artist that I was describing earlier, his name is Mark Wilson. Um, okay. And the interesting, like, interesting part of his background, I do have like I got a, a, a interview with him on my channel from that event that that live. That event we did, I think I, I interviewed him before and after the the, uh, the joint. So it might be something in there on the logs. I've, I interviewed him before, just trying to ask him like what he was doing, what he might have been planning ahead of time. And then I I interviewed him after, you know, with the win, and you know, it might be something in that conversation that, that might pop out. But his background isn't in art; it's actually in like sociology. Um, and so like his work reflected, uh, or his work in general reflects his kind of his discipline more than um than a, a, you know a, a, a kind of a stereotypical art background you know what i mean we, he, his his studies and his research and what influences his works makes sense for what it is that he creates in which you know mm-hmm. you know the, so it, it, when i when i when i learned that i was just like oh man, your work just made t- you know 10 times more not even make more sense but it like you know i just i was able to like put the two and two together um, and, and, and look at his work through a different lens now whenever I see it, you know, and, and appreciate it from that. Because you can have people like, because like, I feel like when you when, you, when I could say something like, oh, yeah, his work has a, a Basquiat aesthetic, then people might come in and be like, oh, he's just copying Basquiat. He just da 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 But when you throw in, no, he's studying these things, and if you look into, like, maybe the dark, you know, elements of Basquiat's work, and this person now works in, or you know, has has a history, or in sociology, you see the connection between why his work could reflect the same type of you know aesthetic. Um, and it's not yeah. just it's not just you know somebody trying to do a carbon copy of, um, you know, I'm gonna do some skulls like Basquiat, and then try to write something cool in there and try to make a point. He he really, you know, at least from 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 my experience watching him, he's really in tune with just creating the work and soaking in what's around him and tuning really tuning everybody like tuning everything in and out at the same time it's so like you know it's wishy-washy like that it's like i'm tuned in to what's happening around me but i have to also tune everybody out so that i can create yes i'm still like no, i still here i'm not i'm not no, you at all i'm uh, on you I just realized what time it was, and I had to at least kiss my kids for a moment and say hi to everybody in the house <laughs> right <laughs> i was like yeah, been, we've been out here having Great conversation. Mm-hmm. And yeah, let me do that. Luckily, it's a rainy day, and yeah. therefore everybody's on chill mode. So yeah. they, they were just like, oh, what's up, Dad? I'm watching. They didn't even say, no, they didn't say much. And that was it. Here, like, it was kind of, so that, that worked out. Right. But, uh, that's not normal, my kids, to be that calm. Um, they do love me. They really do. They, they normally are excited to see their dad. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, I know what that is. It's just like when they, it's just like when a child get that tablet in front of them, you try to get their attention. They just, 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 just tuned in, to get that look on. I can picture, yeah. I, I can picture your oldest right now. Like after you just described it, I could, I could picture her right now. I'm just like, uh huh, <laughs> just and keep, yeah, it, keeping that like, uh huh. They actually looked at me. They no, they, they looked at me. They didn't ignore me. They um, they must have dad. We have a good time. They looked at um, you. They looked through you, and it was like, 
Okay. <laughs> no, I'll just mess with you. All right, all right, all right. They looked through me then. Okay, I'll just mess with you. I ain't there. They did it, no, they did it. They did it because I told them they better take their eyes off the screen so many times that they knew to take their eyes off the screen, to be honest. That's why they do They knew that they're supposed to do that. That's why. They're trained to. Not because they, they, they love me. Um, they love me enough. <laughs> That's all the truth. So that, that, there's the truth. Fine. You, you caught me snitching. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. So, Lord, man, the, um, it's fun. Um. I'm actually, you know, we were talking about, I forgot what uh, I meant to mention this. I have to go to a gallery this afternoon. Yeah, you did. I think you did. As I talk, yeah, but I have a gallery to go to this afternoon. Um, anytime after 6 o'clock. And right now, so, yeah, I told them I'd be there and head out in 30 minutes to head their way. But they want me, they're talking about doing events at their spot. They want to do poetry and classes. So we'll see how things fit in um, to speak on. How I'm a boy, how I'm a give, gave up on doing gallery work, even though I do shows. Like I'm still, I still have to do art shows and show these paintings and this work. Mm-hmm. But I am not. I'm looking for somebody to manage or represent my work, mm-hmm. just to help manage. I'm doing shows. Like I need somebody there next to me. Cause my wife got got my kids sometimes and stuff, so we can't always have her there watching my shoulders when I'm painting. But so I need somebody talking to people, like <laughs> to answer questions. Mm-hmm. And. And if they're going to be that person, then they also should be the person to say, yeah, he has a list of other artwork, art pieces, that she can look at right here for this value or something like I mean, they might as well. And if they're going to do that, then they might as well organize showing the work every once in a while. Like, you know, mm-hmm. it's just all... Right. Yeah. You know, like, that's yeah. so I, I realized that could happen. So that's um, interesting that you, you brought it up, because when you were mentioning, like, not wanting to go, like, the gallery route, in my head, I was thinking, like, exhibiting or showing in galleries at all like i'm just going to create this whole nother lane or focus so much on this experience that it's like it's really just about this but then like you kind of mentioned i think you might maybe you're referring to like just having like gallery representation and somebody's just always showing your work and it's not like uh um i, I i'm more having a discussion because i don't know the answer to what i'm talking about true right now and um so it's more of a discussion on the concept of does the type of work that I do need gallery representation? Because what I je- what I realize to me, what I think is, there's always a need to show your work in a physical form. Yeah. So, I'm not saying I need a gallery to represent my work, but I do need somebody that, because of what I do, I actually need somebody there talking about my work. And then, like I just described, the natural form. Mm-hmm. So. That could be anywhere. Like I don't mind showing work in a warehouse, personally. Like I've sh- I've done art shows in darn near every type of location. I've even done it in a like just I've, I've just put up stuff. So I mean, I'm not afraid to put it up anywhere as long mm. as I can get it out safe. Uh, I've learned my lesson on that. <laughs> and uh, like don't be but so bold. But uh, to that, to the degree of that, yeah, uh, it still has to happen. Yeah, and. As a live painter, it, the documentation of my work is different. Because it, as we described, as we both described, it's more about the experience of the painting still than the end result of the painting. Because the painting could be cool, but that does that's only, that's not really the whole story of the work. Right. right. It really isn't. And, and yeah, um, as you as you, I was I was thinking about this a while ago, but now that it's come back to mind, um, one of the last pieces I I, I collaborated on back in uh, Norfolk was was that concept of the final work or the artwork was the video of the f- four four artists five it was the video of the five artists or the time lapse video of the five artists working on the same canvas like that was the artwork it was a screen up and it was the you know the the the, you know, the concept was based on watching all of us work over the same con- or over the same canvas and the ins and outs of you know the the hustle and bustle of um, food rescue and and all of these you know all the concept that was you know the, the main theme behind the work, but there was still a final artwork that was there beside it that they get to you know people get to walk in and see a painting, but what they were really intended to take in was the video, that was the five of us all working on there and like you know covering up each other's work and or interacting with each other's work and making it all you know making the final product and even in talking to the the carl medley who, who put the piece together who was behind the the concept in the piece 
like he, he stressed that you know more than anything which is like yeah it's like it's really about capturing y'all working on his stuff and you know the the final product is cool we'll get to put that up but i just want i want i want them to see this part because this is what i got from what i learned and studied through like you know learning through uh, about food rescue yeah uh so you know, what you're telling me is i'm messing up again no nah. uh, then I need to have a video up that I should act so order to be like, yeah, like I'm doing it. But uh, what you're telling me is I'm old again. That's really like this whole setup. <laughs> that's really what it that boils down to. I'm old fashioned. I'm really an old soul. Like I, I just am slow with this tech just... using my technology to my advantage. That's all. That's all this. You're even a couple years younger than me, which proves <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm just old. Like you're just a little bit better at it than me and stuff. But, but, yeah. I mean, at yeah, most, um, you just you know, like you don't gotta. It all gotta be a big thing though. Like you just need one of those times that you go out there to do the event to be like, all right, I'm gonna set up these legs, put this phone or this this camera up to capture me while I'm working, make sure nobody knocks my thing over, and for this two hours, it's gonna record me doing my thing, and I'll I'll be able to go back with that and then study that. You know what I mean? And and that'll be your way to study. You know you. Or you can do whatever you do decide to do, put it out. But you know to frame it up so that you can be like, all right, I got an example of it. And if I want to keep doing this, and I feel like this is the way that this should eventually come out, then I'll do that. But you know that's the way to just like not turn it into a big thing. Like, oh, this is what I really need to be doing. Like it, sometimes it's just like just do it once at a real bad level. It don't got to be great, but you just need some frame of reference to be like, all right, yeah, I see why I'm doing this now, or why I want to go in this direction. And, but I mean, yeah, it's also right. promotion too. It's, it's, it's promotional, you know what I mean? It's like, all right, so this is what, it adds to that, you know, when you're marketing, what you're trying to do is like, well, here goes a, a proof of it, because I can't just sit here and do it for you right now, but here goes me doing it, you know, some other times, me, you know, whatever. So, two hours is the amount of time you can have an IG video up. IG Live goes up. Give you two hours on IG Live. Do they give you that? It used or is I it think that? it I used to. It might be less than that. Huh. I thought it was two hours. I know it's at least an hour they give you. I don't know. I don't know if they if they extended it or not. It might depend on what kind of account you got. I've been working to try to do it in an hour or do the time that IG. So an hour would be better. But I, I would like to be able to just go on a site. Just go on the site, like just to make it just like the experience. Like yeah. I'm live. Yeah. That's it. You literally just saw me set up, and now yeah. I'm doing it. There's no there's no tricks here. This is this is the trick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, there's no edits, no nothing. This. It's as good as it gets, yeah. right here. Or well, as bad as it gets, you're gonna see me. You because it's one of the funniest things. The canvas always falls. I've been knocking the canvas over and stuff. Like it's it's never smooth. I, like yeah. I've been trying to be smooth. Like, I, I manage not to get paint on myself most of the time, like at all. Like I can wear a suit and I get paint on me, painting live and being sloppy. And I'm not on the floor. I generally get three spots on the floor. I think every time or. Uh, it doesn't matter. I can't. I'm not gonna worry about that. I can, I can give people real information about weird stuff that happens. Yeah, right. But to, yeah, yeah, yeah. But to that, the um, the experience is a trip. Um, and I forgot what I was gonna say after that. Um, <laughs> it, like good. Yeah. That's it. I say. Um, that that that. Yeah, painting line, doing that. No, I forgot what I was gonna say. Um. Yeah, I forgot what I'm saying. I don't know what point I was making anymore. I think that was the point. True that. That's the point then. Yeah, um. That's the point then. Yeah, um. I mean, it's, it's interesting because I mean, I've, it's, I've had that approach to my work from a more, uh. introverted perspective. I mean, that's what all essentially any of like the time lapses I might I might have done in like in my studio when I was in Norfolk State and things like that. It was it was me trying to capture that same idea of like people seeing the process and all the little like kinks and things that happen that you wouldn't see in the final products. Like, yeah, I'm making these paintings, and even if it is something that I have like a concept or an idea behind, but luckily, like you said, like my process allows me time in between layers to where like I'm forced to like well I'm not forced to but I'm like naturally going to find something else to do until I can get back to the canvas so it's just like oh yeah what 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 happens in those moments when I'm not on the canvas and that's why I used to try to like it was more staged than it was like natural but it was just like oh yeah here go me dancing or here go me like running around the room and just disappearing and popping up somewhere else um but more so just kind of got to catch this this kind of whimsical aspect of you know, what's happening when the paint drying, you know what I mean? It's like, the paint drying is not as boring as it seems, like, you know what I mean? It's like, 
that, yeah, um, we're going back and forth right now, which is cool. That, just give me some ideas. Um, yeah, I enjoyed your shows. Um, and because you, you were very, because there were shows, like I just said, like it was a show. Like to me, you did it. You did what I, you did what I wanted to do, not the way I wanted to do it. And I believe I said that to you when you were doing it and all like that. Mm-hmm. It was you, yo, it was entertaining. It was, edu- it was your way of doing it. I am not able to be camera aware in yeah. that sense that you are because That's of those... my process of how I work. I, like in general, when I do artwork, I have always generally done my work start to finish. Yeah. No matter, like if, it was, if I said I did a piece for 48 hours, I literally sat down and did the piece 48 hours straight. Like I didn't sleep. Mm-hmm. Like it will be that. I was just like that, like because the breaks, because I would want to, I would always want to do the next thing, and I just either have to wait for the paint to dry for me to do it, and I go to another area or something else, mm-hmm. and I forget about eating stuff. And the person I married was the person that brought me food when I was doing that stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I need you in my life, right? <laughs> <laughs> and they were, and I should say, brought me food in a way that I would eat it, because there's ways you bring me food that I just wouldn't eat it. I right. work, and they did it, and I, they got me to eat. So like just stuff like that. So um, like I say that this is healthier for me, too, doing the artwork this way. Uh, it, it just, like, I'm finding, my, like, it's my niche. It's my, I think yeah. this, is my, this is my thing of what works for how I operate um, and, whatever, and whatever that is. And the video presence, like, my concern, because I didn't want to say my concerns, but I guess I have to now, is I tend to, I may stand in the way of the camera. It's like, it's, it's take, it's, I'm concerned that setting, up the, setting it up so that it's right would take away from what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah, because I mean, yeah, more so, I, I would imagine, because I think of that too, like, painting isn't really set up for, like, <laughs> that type of thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, because it, if you're expecting to be the entertainer, your back's going to be to the camera or, or to the camera all the time. And so nobody wants to see that. <laughs> People want to see you, but then, like, you're like, but you want to see the artwork, which I'm also going to be standing in front of while I'm working on it half the time. And so if you're doing all that and you're like, oh, let me be camera aware. Let me move to the side and paint so they can see me make my marks. It changes the way you make the mark. Because if you're standing in front of it and doing this, as opposed to standing to the side and doing it, you get, you know, changes perspective. So, yeah, I feel, I feel you on that. It, it would have to be like an outside person who's, you know, pretty much a videographer taking it, you know, for that. I was like, yo, somebody come in and record me while I'm working. Just don't ask me no questions about nothing. Do your thing. <laughs> Goes up. Yep. Like because now I gotta pay like, somebody. <laughs> that that reiterates the importance of the, like I have to do work that's important enough to yield somebody wanting to shoot it all the time. And if I'm really asking them to do it every time I do it, mm-hmm. I have to compensate. Yep. They be like, oh, I'm just fanning over. Like even if they're fanning over, they still need to be compensated yeah. because that that turns into work for them. It turns into a part of their life. So. Or if you just. What, that's what, Work at a can work on a canvas that's four times your size so that you can't ever really stand in front of enough of the canvas. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's kind of what I realized. It also saying in the back of you. So I I study um in the part of me being weird in all my weird studies, I had to wonder about how I ended up getting interest from people, like um romantic interest or at least possible romantic interest from people from what I was doing. So I looked into what interests what attracted people to men or the people or just the artists or people like that. Number one thing was passion. Um, then it was chest, butt, and back. So when you say what about being appealing by being an artist and having your back to the canvas, I mean your back to everybody, two of the things on the list were seen from the back, the back of a, of a man and their butt. And the other thing was the passion of the work. So, like, and I think that was that's really what is the main appealing thing in general with artists. And I think being a live artist and like what you're doing is just like, if you like somebody that's passionate about the work, that's just that's exactly what you're looking at. It's, yeah. it's that in the moment. <laughs> so I, mean, I get you on that. Like, yeah. like it's exhausting. Like, sex. Like, I mean, it's like not to be like that, but it is exhausting. Like, you didn't put your all into it. So, um, yeah, it's. Um, it can't. I think the appeal of watching a, a person live paint, if they're the right person live painting, just like watching any any actor or, or any performer, mm-hmm. there are things that would that you have to consider at some point too. Like um, like because I, I mean I I hate it, but I respect it so much. I said I dislike it, but I respect it so much when people post themselves with their artwork. 
because in the reality is, yeah, you're buying what's behind the artwork as well. Mm-hmm. Some people are. I want to know who they're supporting. Yeah. Some people buy, and like the idea that a fine person sells a lot more artwork than that. Because some people just trying to get in their pants and they're going to buy artwork right. to try to a woman or anything else. And she does really ugly, tacky paintings, but they don't care. Um, it's good enough for them to buy and try to get a date with her. Because it's low enough a price for them to pay for it to try to ask her to get out of date or ask him to get out on a date. <laughs> like I'll pay a hundred dollars to ask this person on a date to, to look like I got money. I'll do that, or I'll pay like yeah, people. People do that. Yeah. Um, pimping ain't is is easy or any uh, however, but uh, yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, but well, you know that's interesting because now we get uh, damn it conversation getting longer. Fam, camera about to die, but it's fine. Um, but like when I think about the way that I curate my Instagram page specifically and what I like what I appreciate about some other people's, you know, Instagram pages is like mine is curated to show me at work more than it is to show my work. Uh, at least the way you know the way it looks like if you scroll it right now, it's like you'll see my work in there, it'll be images of my work, but then there's a lot more more often than not there's like the setting that I'm working on it in or there's me working on it. Or, you know, whatever. It's the studio setting. Whereas, you know, I can go to, you can go to some other people's pages and you're hard-pressed to find what the person even looked like because it's just their artwork, paid, you know, image after image. And, I, you know, at, at one point I wanted to, I aspired to be like that. I was like, I want my work to feel like it's strong enough to where I don't have to be in, in, in frame ever. And you can just see the work and it's just like, 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 comment, whatever. But I think my personality leans more to I gotta show you my personality more than I can like interact with you because like if somebody comment and it's a, like pretty basic shallow comment I'm probably just gonna at most gonna like it because I'm not gonna you know I don't really have if there's nothing that prompts me to speak to it I'm just like all right <laughs> I've worked on that and being like oh let me type a response to that but like in my head right. I'm just like why do I need to respond to I love this <laughs> like like button <laughs> you know what I mean and I'm a Really, you do? Why do you love it? I have no idea what looks good. What am and I doing right, right, right now? Right, yeah. and like I, I'm not my per, I, like I've never been that type of person to be to like double up on something somebody asks because like I don't I know that's like a perfect it's a perfect marketing you know or understanding marketing is like oh yeah like find out why it is that they, you know just ask them their question back <laughs> in a way that like gets them to talk or gets you to talk about it more. And in my head, I'm like, oh, you like it? That's what's up. Yeah, I'm not, but I'm not gonna be like, why do you like it? <laughs> I'm like, oh, and, you like it? That's what's up. And it, that's just funny. And I don't do it intentionally. And that, I, like know, I, say it, I know. I know. And it, that's just funny. And I don't do it intentionally. And that, I, like know, I, say it, I know. I know. And I appreciate you for saying that. I don't because I feel it reiterates that I don't because I, I try to remind. I was like, "Too well, you're good at sales." I'm like, "I am. I'm not trying to be. I'm really not. Like, I'm good. <laughs> like, I'm really not trying to sell you myself. I'm like, I care about you knowing." I'm curious about. I'm just like. Yeah. I guess empathetic in that way of of wanting to of I'm empathetic and curious mm-hmm. to, for my because it's it's a it's multiple levels of it that lead me to ask right. more than the fact I don't desire to have the conversation. I um I enjoy my solitude. I enjoy that talking to people because it's a it's an information overload because I need to process that that what I just received. Mm-hmm. I ask a bunch of questions. Like I, I don't take it lightly when I ask people questions. I consider right. them. So um, that I think that's the difference, and that's part of my that's part of the work, and that's also why I need a filter. And uh, I'm trying to figure out price. Like uh, let me get back to this thing. I'm trying to figure out pricing and stuff because like I'm like I really I'm gonna go to this spot, and now now I'm getting myself more prepared on what I'm looking for, um, in the hopes that this could be the a chance for that, like a chance to come across somebody like that or a space that is open to being a filter while I work because mm-hmm. that's um, what I'm realizing I need when I'm doing this type of work is I need a, I need somebody, I need people that are capable of dealing with the audience while I'm working. Not because I can't deal with them, right. but it's because it is what it is. Like it doesn't, it's not, it's, it, it messes up the work. <laughs> like, yeah, it just, it, it's in the way. If you don't want me to have artist conversations in the painting, then you better not let me have artist conversations. You know, that's just all this too. They're going to end up in the painting. That's yeah. what I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah. Like, how much was it? I don't know. I accidentally wrote, to, what, 25000 in this mug all of a sudden. Like, what? <laughs> I mean, but that, that, that you know, the, the beauty of, like, potentially the beauty of that is that, like, it always harkens to, like, this moment only existed because it was, you know, this setting. Whereas, 
if none of that conversation, if all of that conversation is like, um, what you say, like filtered through somebody else, then there's never a moment that like those interactions happen in your work, and then the work does it become something else now because it's like it's really just you fully focused on everything else, but then when you're in those other settings where people can in interact with you, and that somewhat influences your work, does it become a you know a more interesting story? Because it's like, oh yeah, this piece, like it's like, oh yeah, I remember this person popped up and. So I threw this in there, and like it might be a random mark to somebody else. Be like, oh, I love this part. I was like, oh yeah, that was when somebody pissed me off because they like bumped me when I was working. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. That's like, yeah. so like, word. I mean, but I can say, but to that point, like, it's not somebody pissed me off. This is the mark it was when somebody bumped me when I was working. Like that to me is part of the work. Like, right. That's the that's literally the environment interacting with me, and like I miss that if I don't do it in the actual. Right. Place. It, it like, becomes uh, too. It almost becomes too pure. It's like oh, watch. It's like you know. Then you become like this. Uh, uh, what would I call it? Uh, uh, I don't know. It kind of puts you on this pedestal. Like oh, like watch him up there work. It's so and you know people like you know create this bigger thing when you come back down from the pedestal they push you on. You're like. What just happened? Like it's just it's just normal me up here working, you know what I mean? It's like it, it almost creates this this picture of like oh yeah you know what what I just said, as opposed to like well, here's me in the center of this crowd. Now it's like oh we're all watching you on the stage and everybody else is back here like just like, just kind of staring at you. It um in in the experience of it at least um so far reflecting on them the one the ones I had it always feels like I'm in a different space in the room. In the and, and although like like because again it's a third it's like it's a third person thing for me mm -hmm. um like I it's it's like me manipulating the body that is experiencing the room not not mm. the body is like you know, that's what it's like it's, it's like like it's that it's that feeling of I'm doing this stuff with this body in the room and I'm limited to so it's a controlled environment like so you're I, I astral projecting. <laughs> I guess it just might be. It just might be. Um, cause I, it's not like, not, not going personal. So anyway, so, <laughs> to the, to the you know, back to the, <laughs> I know what you was about to say. You, know, dude, like, yeah, you, you took it somewhere else. Like, don't take it there right there. I'm not. But, um, I'm kind of ground, I'm going to be grounded. Yeah. Uh, all right. It's, um, Lord have mercy. I don't know how I did that. Um, that, oh, uh, gosh. It is like I'm third person and I'm it's manipulating this figure in the room that's like it's getting the tunes and vibe like the bass vibrates and the stuff and the yeah. sound and the noise and everything the bird, like all it's that moving it's like like interpretive dancing like mm -hmm. I found myself like vibing and moving to the music and that and and kind of dancing while I was doing it and I don't like to do that I definitely don't want to do that publicly but I also was like well shit I mean I just got to do what I got to do so I mean it is what it is that's what's happening that's what I'd be doing if it was private but I'm here and like I'm gonna keep doing so yeah so um but to that it's I don't know what to do about it um I, I like I want it's a controlled environment that's what I was making point so mm -hmm. the, a, I want to control I feel a duty to control the environment for the work like I feel the duty to have certain materials there uh, for me to complete the work and with that that I think there is a duty for there to be a person um, creating a control, um, adding, filtering, so that there is a more controlled environment of mm -hmm. what I'm doing. It's not that they can't interact with me. It's not to say they won't, that person won't speak to me and filter the information. But if they're filtering it, then that gives a consistent, you know, filter that mm -hmm. allows it to be more controlled of a process of what's happening so that there can be more of a consistent work, even though it's still random. It's a, it's a completely random thing. It can be more consistency to the work. That's kind of, that's what I was, I think that's the real point I'm getting at with, with having that management um, in the live scene. Yeah. So I wonder if it would be possible for somebody to more or less commentate what's happening for people to then ask that person because they're like being the voice. But it, may, it, would be a, it would be a hell of a job to try to commentate what's happening in the mind of somebody else. But I'm saying, like, if 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 you if you're hiring somebody to do this and they know enough of your work to be, be like, oh yeah, like you yeah. know, blah blah blah. blah. Um, yeah. So like. I don't care. They could be. It would be. Yeah. I don't care. They could be. Like, I, they could not know anything about my work and just sound and just be entertaining. Like they could make it. Like you just need an MC. The hardest, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Because number one thing I'm hearing from you is me not being distracted by them saying some stuff that. 
that like it's just like them really entertaining the track of me talking to people. I'd be like, shut the hell up, dude. I'm trying to work. Like, <laughs> like, like this, this person, whatever they are, just like entertaining me. Like, um, like, cause it's like, like, if, let's say it was you. Like, it could be a conversation. Like, like I could be working, but the car, it would really end up being me listening to you talking to people to do stuff or something. Like, it could, I don't think you would be a good person to do that for. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, yeah, dude, I steal yeah. your sign, bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we coming here for Mizzou. And he making yeah, the art, but we coming here for Mizzou. <laughs> that's important to be a shared thing, man. It's like, and that's like not bad, but that's like that's not the work I'm doing right now. Yeah, I'm simply to stack what this work is before those things happen. Right, which would be cool. That would be cool, but it's just I'm just like, like, what the heck is this that's going on? Now that it's gotten focused. Mm-hmm. And it needs to be time to do the same. And yeah. Go, so. yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think even you know, kind of as a, as a wrap up to, to all of that is just most of most of it is just like uh, doing it consistently enough with the focus of all right. I've I've had a conversation with somebody to try to figure out what this is and got a way to focus on what it is that's happening. Now I just need the numbers and say all right, I've done enough in this vein and in this effort. To you know, until you can't finally be like define like, all right, this is what it is. This is what I'm, you know, this is how I'm able to monetize off of this experience, um, and and then you know, come up with a better, you know, whatever, what the official pitch is for, for your, your your concept. Really, it's like, all right, this is what it is. This is what I'm doing, and this is why it's different from something else. If you gotta go that far, all right? Yeah, yeah. Um, um, this is. I have to go that far in the statement of this is what this is what I do, this is what it is. Or this is what it is, this is what I do. I, I think I, mean, I know that I shouldn't I don't want to get to the third statement because it should already have been said. You know, two sentences. You know, one yeah. Or two sentences. yeah, it's it's your it's your your shark tank pitch. What's the issue? This is what this is what is, is going on. This is what I'm doing to fix it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um I guess I could say that. I could say we're under, I could say black people are underrepresented and I am representing the hell out of us right now for shit I'm doing. That's what I could say I'm doing. But that, but I don't think that's, I don't I mean, think that defines like, yeah, the, 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 I mean, it could for you, but I don't, I don't know if that, those are the terms or the words that, that would define like the artistic exactly. experience, yeah. you know, like that's just a personal right. joint. Like, this is how I feel about making shit. I don't know. We ain't doing this shit. Because I mean, in that vein, you would have to say, like, I see other cultures or other people doing this, but I don't see us doing it. So here I am doing it. But I can't see that, though. Right. That's what I'm saying. Because, because you don't see anybody doing it. No, no, no. Well, I don't see people doing what I, I see other cultures. I see other traditional cultures doing what I'm doing. I don't see first world cultures doing what I'm doing. That's what I'm saying. Except in in the art world, in the visual art world, I see third world countries doing body paint designs that are like that they're in competitions, like um like with chalk and um style. like I was just looking, I can't think of the name of African culture, but they're doing body paint and like just you know African masks. Mm-hmm. Every year they're making masks because, because literally the culture they just deteriorate enough that they have to do them within every one to three years just to keep them looking nice. So they're always chopping each other and working to do stuff and be like and be in the moment and this work is in the moment. Like when they're doing body paints and scarves for the event, they're doing it in the moment dress and competitive dress of these things that are supposed to channel these feelings and these emotions and experiences happening. In Chinese traditional painting, they're doing similar things where they're looking to channel an expression and they play and they manipulate. So, so do we see it? Yes, but do we see it in anything first world? No. That's what I'm, I, I, I'm pulling from that and connecting it. Have I seen it in other times in history? Kind of, yes. I know those so. and doc and but no, that's that, that's what, to that point. Yeah, it's, uh, it exists and it still exists in certain practices. Right. But it's, like it's um it's astral painting. It's the um Aboriginal astral painting that they do in Australia. Like they do those in spiritual guide escapes and they do those things. So it's a, it's a version of that. Uh, so it's not to say it's not happening. But the idea of doing it for like I'm doing it in the first world way. Like I'm kind of I'm monetizing packaging mm-hmm. in a sense. I'm I'm educating people, harkening back to it. I'm doing it in a first world way in a yeah, and I'm doing it in this other way. 
um, same thing, like, but attempting to tune it to a way that it works for these people. Because otherwise, I'm just doing it like I've been doing it. And that, but that's, it's not the same thing. So, uh, yeah. So, I don't know, yeah, spiritual painting, freestyle painting, moment painting. I think freestyle painting really fits me. It really fits mm-hmm. freestyle painting because it's kind of called to and park and seeing what it looks like. I think there still is something more culturally, I don't know if that's wrong to say, but just something that harkens more to a diverse cultural background because it's not hip hop. Right. I'm not doing hip hop work. Yeah. And my work doesn't come from a hip hop line. I, did I mean, it's improvisation. Yeah, in that yeah. regard, it's improv. Yeah, I have other stuff to do. I've been talking, we've been talking for a long time. You got stuff to do. So that's the same. Yeah, I hear you. No, I'm I just saying it's time. improv. As opposed oh, to like oh, calling yeah. it freestyle, like hip hop culture, but it's improv, it's improvisational. It's you know, same definition, different, different terminology. You know, it takes the the the, yeah. the 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 cultural reference out of it in that regard. Like, oh, it's improvisational. You can then hearken it to jazz, other you know similar. Um, I never call it jazz painting because I like because I like the um. Golly, what's the artist? Um, Coleman, um, Lisa does an abstract painting they, and li- listen to jazz music and does abstract painting. He's a black artist. And he did and he did the and before that his work was all the black people. But that those these all different types of blue, black they were black, black, black. Like he did all those portraits of black people as a black artist. Um, blue faced black people, all that I don't know you can't think of his name. Mm-hmm. James Coleman, Eric Coleman. Uh, I swear his last name is Coleman, but I'm probably wrong on that. I'm I'm just horrible with names. That's so sad. But I can still his face yeah. with glasses, his gray beard. He was on Art 21 even talking about it, and they didn't even show his black paintings. They just showed his art, his um, abstract work. Mm. Either way, that doesn't help anybody. I don't care. I'm sorry. I'm telling you a story. I'm, I'm not drawing a picture right now of the dude, but he has like an oval shaped kind of head. Doesn't have. A, like, well, like, hey, I don't know why you're going any deeper. <laughs> Tell you his name though. <laughs> Cannot get his get the name out. That's it. <laughs> I can tell y'all. I can tell you about. I can tell you more about his career than his name. Um, so, <laughs> but he does. Like I, I harken my work more to that because I can do the paint. I can practice these types of paintings, and I get visions and go into the strands for these paintings. When I do, when I play my jazz, like actually playing on the organ, playing the piano, or the guitar, or something. But I also get it when I'm playing. Just playing the music and listening to it. And I want to do a series of work where I'm just for albums. Like I'll put an album on, I'll just paint during the entire theme of the album and let that be the piece. Like, anyway, I did a painting of this album and just do those. Just, just to say I did them as practice for me and maybe they turn out good or not. So I was about yeah, to say, I was about to say start with a song, but then I remember how long a song is. <laughs> I was like, this will be a short painting. On a peak, I, but I can easily put a song on a peak and just play it over and over. And do yeah, it. I, and it wouldn't bother. Um, I bet you've been in the studio before. <laughs> like, what I mean, but like because like the the purpose would be capturing live in real time, like you know, the the piece start to finish and the song. So in my head, I was thinking, how can you do the album version, but like shorter, so as like a study version? So you'd be like, oh yeah, here goes a five minute clip of what I'm talking about, but it'd be like. Um, it's like, but albums are supposed to be an experience anyway, so I right. thought it was like a good parking tool. Like, right. It was like, and I'm going to albums where there was a time where people took time to make to curate the listening experience. Not, I don't like albums that don't have that, so I would mm-hmm. just go to the albums that I like and just paint them. They're the ones that move me and use that as statements. And mm-hmm. I, you know, I have that record collection now that goes way back to shoot forever ago now. I'm hyped about that. Your grandparents stuff and things. So yeah. I was going to I thought it would be cool to do some paintings of music that my grandparents listened to and see how I connected. And my dad probably heard and that now I listened to. That's three generations listening to the same thing. And like I wonder how that would be connecting to that music. Because I connect to it crazy. Mm-hmm. So it would be interesting to see how the painting and the work comes out of that and the expression of those. So just, yeah. All these different ideas and ways of working. Um, and I and I, I have to have time time to do it. So that's what I did. <laughs> uh, so yeah, because I have conversations like this more than one person. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, it was great talking. To you. Uh, wish I was talking more about your work now, but you're you're just studying. You're not just studying, but you're in that you're in a study phase, I think, right? And the moving forward phase. So 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. I have. I mean, I haven't learned a lot, but we'll it'll it'll we'll we'll end up doing the same thing we just did. So I won't try to break it break down what you know some ideas that have come to mind. I probably I don't know. Last time we talked, I probably mentioned some of it, but either way, I ain't gonna get into that. But yeah, yeah, I'm 80 deep right now. So you can say that I finished 80. Well, yeah, you're in the world. You're in the world, homie. Yeah, yeah. I guess you're in the right spot. Though. I might be lying. I might be. I might be at 85 today. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I think I hit 85 today, so I got 15 left. Yeah, that's right. It's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I should be done. My, my series. Okay, cool. Yeah. Did you think I'd be cracking pieces out like that the way I'm talking about how I paint? No. <laughs> I'm not. I, man, dude, my progression. Is, I have so I have so many so much work. I don't even realize how much work I have because I had um, high school hit me up. Like I said. And I just pulled a piece out my my like oh yeah here you go here's a, here's a beautiful realistic piece I did a few years ago out of the series I had left over I forgot all about that piece yeah I, I still have it dang that person been asking to buy it and they still ain't bought it all right cool sold it for four times like oh, all that so I mean it's just fun um, I'm blessed in that sense like mm-hmm. um, like work the hard work is off doing it like what you saw my page off you had a way more work on than I've kept up with so that's good and bad I guess I don't know like I get rid of it like get rid of the work home yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but, um, and, I, and I, I don't know why I didn't win the competition if I did. So I was supposed to win the competition because I entered. <laughs> Just because I entered, uh, I thought that was the case. I, I was supposed to be rigged with my face on American. So uh, if it didn't, okay. Nah, uh, that's, that's right. Another another Henrico High graduate won it. <laughs> see, that's what I mean. See, that's why I want to enter the contest. Fuck that man. They ain't rigged for me to win. I don't even. I don't want to live this way. I have a better chance to ask it and try to get it from you or take it from you when I come over than I do <laughs> enter the contest. Like, that's, that's what I said. Like, you got no problem <laughs> with that either. <laughs> so you're helping me with my interaction with, with my, my community. The more people that look like they're participating, the better it looks and, and the better it makes remember, me feel. Remember, remember that. I need to do the same thing on my end then, too. Cause I don't have to. I have no reason to do it. <laughs> I'm already here. I don't, so, yeah. So remember that. So yeah, but yeah, I need a lot. I, I know the people at the gallery. This is gonna be at the six. It's like seven forty three now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah. let me go ahead and head over there. Yeah, have a lot.